Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Carl Emerson here, live from Punta Mita. Thank you for tuning in today and our checking in series as we're going to go live with a pioneer from Punta Mita, Lynn Bairstow. Lynn's been around here for 20 years, I believe. She's like the furniture in Punta Mita. Nice, healthy, and looking great. Um, she's part of many stories in Punta Mita. She was part of the sales team in the beginning, the marketing team. So she knows, uh, nice to see Palma Sola tuning in again. Thank you, Mike, and all the Palma Sola team. I was down there today. I saw the you're all working hard on getting ready to re reopen. I see you have some guests coming in in about the 20th or so. So good to see everybody had their painting, the br brush in their hands and painting. So good to see uh, Palma Sola back again very soon. Nice to see my friend Alfredo Bonin checking in, as always, on our Instagram Lives, Live Punta Mita. Very good. Nice. Thank you for joining us as we wait for Lynn to join. Let me check and see if she's there with us yet. There she is. Here we go, back again, live from Punta Mita with Lynn Best. Oh, hi, Lynn. Hey, Carl. How are you? Good. You're looking wonderful today. Oh, well, uh, I'm here in Punta Mita, so there's uh, a lot to there be. You go. Grateful for, yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for checking in with me today. I haven't seen you for a while. And uh, tell me, how long have you lived in Punta Mita now? How many years has it been? Um, I don't want to say exactly how many years, but I'll just say more than 10. But I've been here for, wow. I've been here for a long time. I've actually been here since the beginning. I've been here 20 years. So, right, um, I know. Uh, happily. You're, you're a pioneer like, like no other, as they say. You have a home here. You worked here. You even wrote the book about Punta Mita. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, that was a, a labor of love and, and one of the easiest things I've done and, and one of the things that have given me a great amount of satisfaction. It was just so wonderful to be able to relive all the memories I have of being here over the years and to see how it's grown and developed and become such a beautiful place. Wow, yeah. where's this photo? I've got some old photos. I have in a photo <laughs> album. When was this? This is a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, probably. I think that was St. Regis. Um, that was, okay. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you must have many fond, many fond memories Beach of Club. Punta Mita. Oh, I have so many. I have so many. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of them, like we... the, the golf and gourmet festivals that you've been putting on and all the events that you've organized, uh, yeah, the carnival, the, um, the uh, flavors, all the golf yeah. tournaments. So it's been a lot more no, fun here you. since you've arrived. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your support of all those creations uh, along the way. This year, Lynn, it will be the 10th anniversary of the Punta Mita Gourmet Golf Classic. 10 years. Ah, yeah. There we go. I we, have, we even set a date. Uh, we, from the 5th to the 8th of November, we've put it. We've changed the date. We brought it forward in the season. As you know, the season in Punta Mitas is traditionally begins uh, in November when all the guests start getting cold up the north and people start coming down. Uh, so that's, we put it at the beginning. Obviously, it will be a little bit different than we've done the other Gourmet Golfs, but it's such a great event that it can adapt to any type of, uh, uh, you know, needs that they, we need to do in terms of, uh, it'll be more private dinners uh, in different residences, uh, smaller gatherings, but it, it surely will be fun, as you know. Well, one of the things I love best about the event is every year it feels a little bit different. So it's not like you're repeating the event, and that's because you bring in so many varied chefs. Of course, we have our favorites that come back year after year, and yeah. uh, and then we have some new faces too and new types of events. But yeah, I think you know I can I, I think all the adaptations that we need to make in this COVID crisis time. Um, in some ways, they might be better. We might find that that's a little bit more intimate of a way. And I have to say that the early part of November happens to be my absolute favorite time of the year in Punta Mita because the weather has shifted, everything is green, the ocean is still warm. So if you haven't been here at that time of year for anyone tuning in, it's like early November, hands down my favorite part of the year. Definitely, definitely, Lynn. And 
And uh, I've been thinking as we're just kicking off this uh, checking in series, you you created, uh, as I created the Gourmet Golf, you created the Puntamita Tech Talks. And I've been thinking, I've seen so many, basically uh, many of our residents who have stayed here in the quarantine and many Mexican nationals who have um, rented long term and have made Punta Mita their home because they are in Mexico. They're, if they want to be a drive away, they can drive back to Mexico City in nine hours if needs be. But most of all, and I think I've, this is where I'm taking it to tech, technology, is everything is very connected. You are connected in Punta Mita. So I think people have realized that they can work from. So this may be a new, a new avenue we have uh, for Punta Mita, low density, high connectivity, uh, secure, Punta Mita Hospital. I think they're great ingredients. What do you think? Well, I mean, as you know, this has been my primary home for so many years. And, you know, I have traveled a lot. So I spent a lot of my time in San Francisco and in Mexico City, Guadalajara, with the technology business, with Mita Ventures. But I do my visitation and meeting work when I'm away, but I do a lot of my work work when I'm here in Punta Mita. I find it's a fantastic place to think. Absolutely, the connectivity. Now we, we're all used to the Zoom and Google Meet and all the video opportunities that we have to connect. So I, I have been a believer of that way of working for many years. And I'm so happy that the rest of the world is getting on board with it. And I think that there's even more reasons to have this as your home because you know, it's so inspiring to be here and you really do have fewer distractions and are able to get more things done. And I think people have, have, have found that and discovered that. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I just see a couple of Domingo who just checked in. He's one of those who are around here working and look for looking at the fine balance between working uh, in a destination like Punta Mita as my daughters, as our daughters do as well. You know, they're working, they've been right. here for two months. They say they're more productive here than they are back in the city, you know, uh, yeah. you know, so it's great. And then they can exercise, they can ride the bike, they can play golf and tennis and pickleball and, uh, and, and enjoy life. So tell me, do you have dates for next year's Tech Talks, Lynn? Yes, we do. It'll be the 9th through the 11th. So it's always that same weekend in February. So it's the weekend in between the, the Mexican holiday, the Puente, and President's Day in the U.S. And we found that's a great weekend. And we're very hopeful. I mean, I think of all the conferences that are held, Punta Mita Tech Talks has always been one of very low density. It's around 100 participants, 100 to 120. It's open air. So we hold it at Kapuri Beach Club, and we have plenty of fresh air. We can implement social distancing. We're already talking about ways to do that. Our nighttime events are in the open air, so I see no reason to not have that happen again. And as a matter of fact, what uh, our plans are, we'll announce it here now, is to even have a series of more uh, video conferences and smaller get-togethers with our community in order to keep the conversation going. Because I think Meet to Tech Talks has been just a fabulous way of really promoting all of the tech innovation that's going on in Mexico and there's some exciting stuff happening and companies being developed and founded and so we need to do even more of that to help support the Mexican economy and and give opportunities for new jobs and employment and you know everyone loves Punta Mita they love being here so we're looking forward to having it here again in February. Surely surely Lena listen this is quite a busy week as you can imagine you've probably heard uh, in the news the governor has announced uh, uh, while we wait for the details, but he has announced that hotels and motels can reopen. So um, as of the 15th of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of June, in the meantime, restaurants, as you've seen downtown and in Sufi have reopened. Uh, so we're all in the process at the moment of uh, cranking up the machine and making sure Punta Meters ready for everybody when they when they start to come back and that that involves you know all the protocols etc cetera, etc cetera, which which need and every everybody has to do that uh, on a global level uh, to ensure that people feel safe coming what are your initial thoughts you've been into town you've been around you 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 know everything even before i do so tell me <laughs> well i honestly think that uh, you know especially having been here and you've been here too but 
I have felt so safe and so secure and so protected in Punta Mita. I think just the natural environment is really good for your peace of mind. And I think mental health is an important part of what we're all going through. Everyone has a lot of stress. When I talk to my friends and business associates in Mexico City, in San Francisco, there's a level of stress among the community that I don't find here. So I think it'd be very healthy for people to take a break and to get outside and near the ocean. Um, if you are comfortable flying, I think the very best place you could be would be Punta Mita because you, Carl, have done a fantastic job of keeping us all safe. We're all on board with wearing the masks, with you know, respecting uh, personal space. And so of all the places in the world, it's a short flight from most destinations in the US and it's a place where you can really be comfortable and have some fun too. Go for a walk on the beach, go for a paddle, go for a round of golf. So, you know, we have to get back to living our lives too. Um, the other thing too, that I think is a really, really important aspect, Carl, is the way Punta Mita and our foundations have supported local community with the, uh, the, the food donations and baskets to make sure that no one in our surrounding area is going hungry and that everybody feels supported and cared for and a true part of the community. And I see it when I go into town, it's like the, the spirit of the community and the, and the residents there is so unified and supportive. And I think that's a really rare thing. And it just shows the, the level of love and community that we have here. So that's um, another. Yeah, that's, you're dead right there. That's been extremely gratifying for all of us that have formed a part of that initiative with Peace and with Dine and the uh, Foundation for Meta yeah. and uh, Meta Vivi. Yeah, it's extremely active, extremely gratifying and helpful to the community at large. So uh, I think that's, that's one of the, when I'm going to look back, I think that's one of the things I'm going to look back on this is how quickly this community reacted to helping our neighbors and helping those that were uh, affected immediately with the loss of income and, and tips and all that th stuff that goes around the hospitality business. No? So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And uh, tell me, Lynn, uh, what are your plans uh, coming around once everything's open? I saw you at Somebody told me you were at La Pescadora restaurant the other day. How was that experience? It was great. Yes, I actually had a friend of mine come in from San Francisco. And so we met at uh, Pescadora to have some lunch. And, you know, and she was so happy to be in the area and, and back into Mexico. She's a regular attendee of Meet to Tech Talks, Olivia. And um, so we were able to catch up. But I felt so confident in the level of of uh, food service, the wait staff was all, you know, I had my temperature taken, hands uh, gel, uh, tables were distanced, menu was on a chalkboard, and yeah. the, the protocols were all in place, but it felt so good to be outside and to see people working. The wait staff was so thrilled to have people in the restaurants. I think everyone's really, you know, looking forward to getting, yeah, getting was... back and, you know, trying to, but we all need to be safe and do our parts too, to help support the fact that we have not had incidences of the illness and we need to yep. keep ourselves, you know, protected. We're very, safe. very privileged indeed, Lynn, as you, we've mm -hmm. had one in the local town here, which is, you know, the hospital is here. We're fully equipped with protocols, touch wood. Uh, you know, we've been, <laughs> we've been extremely, extremely fortunate and, and lucky. Um, in that, in that sense, um, tell me, you know, one thing that you, you said something there, I was there, I missed you, obviously, I, I got in a bit late, I had to play some golf with a friend of mine, John. Of Martin course Bell, you did. <laughs> who's here in town, um, I, in quarantine and some other friends, and we got there a bit late, but I had the same feeling. And what a great, great vibe it still had, you know, with the distancing, the, the waiters were still there all. It was, it was a good vibe, you're, you're very right. And I think one of the great things that, Punta Mita and Punta de Mita has in this new reality that we live is, is so much al fresco. Everything is al fresco here. And that's, that's, what's, that's what's recommended at the moment. You know, stay outdoors, be outdoors, uh, be it warm or be it uh, and having a beer or, you know, and, and you can have, and let's have a great time. And vitamin D, which you get from sunshine. And so that's considered one of the best ways of uh, protecting yourselves from the virus too, what I've been reading. I mean, I know there's a million different, you know, theories out there, but um, can't hurt. And I think uh, getting some sunshine and it just, like I said, it's like, we're all, 
under the stress of uncertainty, it's been a very, very, it, it, I, we've never seen anything like it. It's just been a, a you know, a, 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 a time that takes your breath away. Um, but mental health is important. And that's why taking care of yourself is important and giving yourself the opportunity to enjoy life and to appreciate it and to be with your friends. And I, I just can't, I mean, I can't think of another a better place, another place in the world that can give you so much. Yeah. You know, you don't have to convince me. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you, you've, you've had Claude and dogs are one of the, the your favorite <laughs> things. There's a really cool dog scene and I'm included in that, or my wife is included <laughs> in, in Punta Mita. There's the gang that walks the dogs, at, or they used to be here now, many of them gone home at 7 a.m. in the morning. There's the the, the, the caddies and the browdies and the, all the different, we even have our yappy hour with the dogs in season. <laughs> Tell me, what's, like, what's the life of a dog like here in Punta Mita? Yeah, well, Kyla, my golden retriever, <laughs> would tell you it's pretty darn good. And actually that scene, that photo is her birthday party. So all the regular dog walkers, you know, it was kind of a fun way to get together. And, you know, we had a uh, shard dog, Nay, and uh, some pup treats and things like okay. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't like creativity down here. We'll find any excuse to, <laughs> any excuse. to have a party. Yeah. Right, yeah. But, oh, that's the... I mean, she, there's nothing in the world she loves better than catching her yellow ball when I throw it in the ocean at Pacifico Beach Club. So she, uh, that's her, that she lives for that and never gets tired of it. And neither do I, frankly. No, I can see that. I always look forward to that Sunday afternoon post uh, you know, sunset, Chardonnay, and then walking the dog. It doesn't get better than that. Tell me, Lynn, you'll be happy to know at least uh, it looks like, we're go looks like we're going to be, let's pencil this in. We will be opening the Tale of the Whale restaurant at the golf club on uh, next Tuesday, the 16th. We'll most likely and hopefully, we're waiting on the governor's final uh, 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 announcements at the end of this week as to exactly what we can open, uh, but probably, uh, most likely, pencil. I put all those caveats in there. Uh, the 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 Pacifico Beach Club, uh, the two hotels open on July the first, as far as we know, the Saint Regis and and the uh, and the Four Seasons, uh, each one with a different set of surprises, and obviously the vacational rentals will be up and going, and uh, we'll open up the Surf Club. Uh, at, at La Lancha oh, on the 1st of July. Great. Oh, that's exciting so that's, news. That's a lot, of, a lot of good news. So for the people that visit us in July, they will have both hotels open. Uh, the Pacifico Golf Course will have one course open at the time, which is normal at this time of the year. All the, all the, all the beach clubs will be open, with the exception of Kapuri, but because we have four beach clubs, as you know. And uh, so, yeah, so it'll be back to Punta Mita like the good old days. Well, I'm really looking forward to the the surf club opening. And I, have you explained what that is? Because you and I know what it is, but I'm really <laughs> excited about that. Be, yeah, I actually had a I had a at an Instagram live earlier this week with. Oh uh, right, I missed it. Rocco I was so sorry. Yeah, so surf, yeah, I, yeah. Surf was I really... the theme there, but um, okay. Yeah, the surf club is located down at La Lancha, which is a beautiful beach with so, uh, one of the best breaks in in, in my in favorite break. Area. And Punta Mita itself, uh, for the surfers, uh, um, you know, has about six or different breaks, uh, right from El Faro, El Anclote, Bahia, uh, La Lancha. So it's it's a, a heaven for surfers. It's not it's you know that middle level surfers, middle to good beginners. It's got nice long waves, as you know from your surfing days when you were out there at El Anclote. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's great. So this surf club is going to be very, I, I call it, Lynn, like Tulum meets Punta Mita. Yeah, I, I, I just think it's Punta Mita. <laughs> ah! I'll take that. I like, I, I, I mean, I love Tulum and I had a chance to go there in January this year. It'd been a long time since I'd been there. Wow, has it changed? Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's just nothing like Punta Mita. So it's just Punta Mita. Yes, I see Christine. <laughs> Christina, uh, who used to work with me, just checked in, and she hey, she Christine. helped me help w helped us with uh, with uh, with uh, with the, the design of that surf club and the project as well. 
It's Stephanie ah. who thinks she's a surfer, but let's see if she's going to be able to surf. But oh, anyway, back, <laughs> back, back to uh, our checking in. Um, over, over there, how have you been connected? Have you been full of Zooms and, and Instagram Lives and all that over the last, uh, last month? Yeah, I have been. Um, even, I mean, to be honest, it's like I've been, continued to be busy. So, you know, I, I still am working, keeping active. Um, everything is, you know, it's moved to video. So I haven't been traveling, which I was telling someone, I think I haven't traveled as, I, I think the last time I've been in one place for so long was, you know, when I was like 20. You know, I'm usually a person on the move a lot, and I really yeah, enjoyed too. it. It has been so great to be in one place for a while. So I yeah. love that, but I've been busy. Yes, Zooms, we did a startup selection process for an accelerator by Zoom. We did, um, you know, I did a webinar on LATAM pitching strategies for startups last week on Zoom, and, you know, I'm taking ballet classes on Zoom. You know? Wow. <laughs> So uh, it's been, um, yeah, it's been all good. And then, uh, of course, I'm out and in the lovely Punta Vita fresh air and walking Kyla and, and being outside and just enjoying this fantastic weather, too. Yeah. Looks, uh, from what I can see, Lynn, at the moment, uh, it's looking like until they open up the travel from the U.S., uh, it looks like we'll have a lot of Mexicans that will be down here in the month of July. I've seen a lot of... Uh, a lot of people taking the whole month, which is uh, to, you know, leave Mexico City and work, have the family here in a secure environment. So I think that's a trend we're going to see uh, over the next month. And I'm sure once uh, it's your people from Dallas, L.A., the closer cities that we have that are just a one flight not connecting will get down. Um, so I, I believe we're going to see a busy, a busy uh, summer, so to speak, you know, not like we were before. I see our hoteliers. Uh, I was speaking to John O'Sullivan, his idea, his idea of a, a luxury hotel within a luxury hotel. So he's basically opening up 30% of his inventory, but only the very best of the Four Seasons inventory, like giving each one a private beach, giving each one all their own spaces. So I think that's, that's great stuff to hear. And, um, and as you say, the low density of Punta Mita makes it even, even more attractive. I agree. I think I, I think that to your point, people will not be uncomfortable at all being here. It's just the how they get there. So the airplanes and the travel is still a point of uncertainty because it's been so long since we've been on a plane. We don't really know what to expect. And um, for the private plane passenger, that's a no brainer. They should be down here right away. But I do think longer stays so that if you are going to travel, that you'll be here for a while. And as we talked about earlier, it's like there's no reason why you can't conduct business and, you know, and, and work while you're here and, you know, and exactly. have the best of both worlds. Anyway, Lynn, I knew this was going to fly this time. So <laughs> it's going flying a bit too fast for my liking. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Lynn? Uh, for those that might be thinking of coming down here or, or anything, another message that you'd like to share with anybody before we check out? Um, I just, I just want to thank the staff and the team of Punta Mita. I think everyone has done a great job. The Beach Club's been doing the takeout service, um, you know, the food to go. And I've been a regular customer. And I have to say, it's just such a pleasure to see those familiar faces, which we all love. I mean, the team here, you know, as you go in and out of the gates, it's like everybody has such an incredible attitude. And, it, you know, it's I've always I mean, I've, I always know this is a beautiful community, but it's bumped it up even higher. And yeah. I, it, it feels like family here, truly everybody being family. And it's been a pleasure and thank you for keeping us all safe, Carl. It's been great. Dina's done a great job. The Punta Mita Hospital too. So yeah, uh, hurry down everybody. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been, yeah. I mean, you've been here as, as long as I have over this, this, uh, during this, we've seen a lot of other people. I see my friend Rodrigo Lebois also just checked in there. He's been here for a couple of months as have many others. It's been a fantastic place to be where you can realize how beautiful it is and how safe it is and how, you know, I think I, I go to, you know, I was sick probably last year sometime in November. And the fact that I have a hospital that's right here, right, with all the, with all the, with all the COVID, uh, equipment and ventilators and respirators and 
protocols and tests and everything. It's literally right. At, I could throw a stone from my office there. So we, that's really comforting to, to have in, a, in any destination. And, you know, we, we are privileged with that here. So, uh, and I can think of many other great things that, that this, uh, apart from having the luxury of being with my two girls and Sabine mm -hmm. over all this time, uh, which we never had for many years. So that's been great. And, you know, and, and Punta Mita has been a safe place and everybody's helped. I might have been the coordinator, if you like, or the, the captain of coordination the captain. to make this all happen and, and having to police it here and there <laughs> once in a while, make sure everybody's behaving. But other than that, it's been, it's been fun. We, it's never, there's never been a dull moment. Yeah, I think we're all going to, those of us who've been lucky enough to be here, will look back on this as just being a, an incredibly um, unique and, and special time during a time that's been really challenging throughout the world. And no one is taking that for granted. I think we're all super aware of that. And it's just given us a chance to reflect back on what we can do in our lives to, you know, help help make uh, this, uh, uh, you know, a, a better place overall. So um, I'm talking about the world and not Punta Mita. Right. It's pretty terrific right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sure is, Lynn. And uh, I can't thank you enough for your support joining me today. And as always, with your help in, in everything, I, in the back of house that I do, there's always Lynn Bairstow to give me a hand. So uh, uh, I appreciate that. And you take care and uh, we'll see you around. Okay, see you soon. Thanks so much, Carl. Bye. Bye.